G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Chimera, otherwise known as a Honey Badger in real life. But the Chimera is the generically named Call of Duty weapon, possibly to stop them from paying licenses or royalties or something like that to the manufacturer of this particular weapon. But that's what it's called. It has custom sounds that have been ported in from Call of Duty, and the animations have been ported as well, possibly rotoscope. So it's like the gun jumped right out of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and straight into Fortnite. Fallout 4, and slowly but surely, we're turning Fallout 4 into Call of Duty, which I am A-OK -okay with. I approve of this. So, what is this thing in real life? It's a PDW with an intermediate cartridge, the 300 blackout rounds, which you can see here, which the dimensions are just a little bit smaller than your 762 NATO rounds, but what they do is they basically offer better performance with a shorter barrel than your standard 556 rounds, and when they're subsonic, they're slightly more quiet, which I guess their namesake, Blackout, and you know, that's pretty stealthy and quiet, right? But you get a lot of power out of these things, a lot more power than you get out of a 5.56, and that is going to be reflected by the amount of damage we can pull out of this thing, which we'll see later. The Honey Badger was, I think, developed, produced from 2011 to 2020, so it's a fairly uh, recent gun in the whole scheme of things, which means it's law-breaking, so dear god, no. It also features this uh, AR-15 design, which is a swear word if you're from CNN, so pardon my French. But, uh, yeah, it's got that design, so it's going to be fairly interchangeable between the parts of the uh, US forces already using the M4, I suppose. So, you know, it'll make all of the weapons more sort of uniform, so if you pick up an M4, it'll be like, using this thing, great. And people who are using the M4 and upgraded to a weapon like this will feel right at home with it, I suppose. So, with this short barreled PDW thing, there's some customization options. And the receivers, you can get semi auto and automatic, but they have different flavor text with all of these. In, like, instead of like the hard and powerful automatic, whatever, they've just got the single word there. The best ones that you want to go for are advanced automatic and advanced single. Curiously, no perk requirements here. Yeah, there's requirements for materials, but uh, this is not level gated to anything. So potentially if you find one of these things at level one, you could scrounge together these resources and find yourself with an advanced Chimera fairly early into the game. That's 230 damage and we can only go up from here. Now, there's a legendary effect if you need it. I don't think we will, but I think explosive would be pretty awesome on this. But we'll move on. Right now, we've got the standard barrel, which is the integrally suppressed version. You can throw a suppressor on this particular barrel here. You can even see the thread on it. This will actually give you an increased range and accuracy, which is going to help out your damage over range. And we've actually moved attachment points because we've gained the muzzle slot, which pushed the thing up a little bit. But whilst we're on the muzzle slot, you can throw suppressors on here, including giant Russian burrito suppressors. Where is it? There it is. There's one called Harbinger D20, which is a wrapped one, so we'll come up less on thermal scopes, right? We'll throw that one on. Harbinger. Is that a typo? <laughs> That's not what the Reaper was called in Mass Effect 2. Anyway, so you can have this rail attachment where you can throw a laser sight, either red, green, and there's even blue laser sights, which is great. Let's go with green, this hip shot L20. You'll also notice that most of these have very flavorful text. I've just been on the horn with the fam over at uh, Warfighters Workshop. Discord, they're just saying that most of this stuff is just flavor text copied verbatim from Call of Duty, so don't be reading into those too much. Just pick the color that you want and move straight on. You can change the pistol grip. I'm not sure whether this does anything, but this one sure looks comfortable, so we'll throw that one on. And the lower rail, you can attach a grip, including some angled grips, some vertical grips. This one looks cool. It's like one of those foldable grips. And whether they actually do anything in comparison to each other, not sure. But there's also this grip pod here, which is not the weapon I'd want to use that for. But maybe that extra stability would be nice. And I don't know, you'd like prop this weapon up and make it look cool on your shelf or something with the grip pod. Very nice. Let's go with that one. Why not? Next up, we've got ammunition. This is where it gets interesting because Warfighter generally likes to put in all of this customization options for the ammo types, obviously already using the 300 blackout rounds. They're not going to change that. You just get secret extra legendary effects, including incendiary, which doesn't give you Skyrim flame damage. It just gives you standard energy damage. Cryo doesn't give any uh, Skyrim frost damage, which sucks, but 
Hollow Point here gives us 422 damage. This one does have perk requirements on it, so you've got to earn it with Gunnut Rank 4 and Science Rank 2 to get that. But there's also Depleted Uranium, potentially useful against human targets, but not much else. But in terms of sheer raw power damage, Hollow Point is definitely the way to go. Deals massive amounts of damage to enemy targets. You sure bet it will. And... <laughs> Well, once we get the 4.4 snake multipliers going with this thing, I think it's going to be quite strong. Right now, I've got a standard magazine. You can throw a 20 round magazine here or a 45 round magazine for sustained fire purposes. Always go for the biggest mag possible. And you can. Oh, wait, we've already gone over the barrels. That's fine. You can change the sights on this. Right now, I've just got standard irons and you've got a range of copy over ported Call of Duty sights. For your pleasure including this one scope which i'm going to be utilizing on a semi-auto version hoping we get some sniper knockdowns with that should we need them although possibly with this damage we will not but i'll quickly go through these all just so you can see that's a russian pso site that one's a combo red dot site which as an american weapon i shouldn't put that on but i'm leaning towards it but i think i saw an aerotech here perfect we'll do that and you can have a stock, a TRX-56 or a Ravage-8. Let's go that one. Honestly, that stock looks very familiar to some of the tactical real-life stocks that I've seen on other tactical weapon mods, so that's cool. Unfortunately for me, there is no paint section here, but I'm thinking that might be coming along just a little bit later, so be on the lookout for that. Getting this weapon is easy, as well as the ammunition, of course. Go to Weapon Chimera under your chemistry workbench, just like all good weapon mods, and you can craft it. You will have to sacrifice your vanilla game assault rifles, so I'm sure you're all very devastated about that in order to get this. But there's no perk requirements here, so I guess you could say that there's a requirement for this assault rifle, which won't show up until later levels but even then it's going to be pretty easy to get get yourself to level 20 you'll have people sporting in with them fairly soon and you'll get two lead it will require to make these sterner blackout rounds and for those you'll get six rounds out of it which is not too bad bang for your buck but if you don't keep on top of how much lead you have you might be running out of that stuff pretty fast. welcome to the immersive gunners plaza whilst the gunners over there get themselves warmed up on what appears to be some sort of blood bug i'm going to take out my frustration on this car <laughs> and there it goes so yeah just like standard uh warfighter protocol we might get super high bash damages out of this which is fine because you know it's call of duty you're supposed to hit something and kill it in close quarters that's just how it works anyways this is the honey badger in first person it's got animations that you might recognize from call of duty of course being ported and all and the third person animations are great as well because should you choose one that doesn't have a foregrip you'll hold it differently as compared to a foregripped version so here's what i've made this one is my suppressed sniper barrel this one here is an unsuppressed short-barreled version with a blue chevron reflex sight, which is slightly more visible than the red would be in this. So yay for me being colorblind. I can actually see where I'm shooting. This one has a sort of see-through scope looking thing. I think it's a little bit more zoom in, but we've got that nice black crosshair to zero in for our aiming and uh it's also semi-auto as well don't know if the scope keyword is applied to this but since this one is an actual night vision scope of course i think we'll be able to get some sweet kills with it and we'll start with this and we'll go to the good old-fashioned power spot and we'll start sniping at gunners that's a thousand damage i just got to that guy in the face so um yeah and we can fire this thing super fast if we feel like it like that fast. I, if I hammer the trigger, my DPS would be going through the roof. Let's not let that guy get close. The trick here is to not get spotted, and that shouldn't be a problem. Apologies to anyone who's watching this in a dark room, seeing all these bright green colors in the middle of the day. Might be a little bit uh, disorienting. I don't mean to flashbang my audience on a uh, somewhat daily basis, depending on my upload schedule. But yeah, this is the sniper version. Um, it's powerful. The word overpowered comes to mind, but you know what? We've had two stinkers. One of them was my fault over that Fallout New Vegas build video where I didn't make a good build at all. And the other one was the bar, which didn't have any range at all, which was frustrating. Let's use this version. I think I just saw a thousand damage on a 
weapon that fires automatic for sneak criticals. So I think we're going to have a little bit of fun with this. And yeah. <laughs> At the time to kill here, even though we're playing on very high difficulty, which, mind you, is costing me half of my damage, I'm thinking... If I played a game of Call of Duty and shot a dude like this, they'd die in a very similar, probably slightly faster amount of time. The time to kill here, it's pretty massive. Although we're only playing against dumb Bethesda AI that can still no-scope me, but unfortunately for them, they haven't accounted for my 1,400 or so health combined with some defense stats that are actually not that great at I don't have Ballistic Weave on. It don't want to make things too easy, do we? Anyways, enough with the suppressed. We'll move over to something a little bit more close quarters. Listen to the sound of the Honey Badger. A slightly more standard time to kill without the use of the Ace Operator perk to get my suppressor damage up, but I think that's a more sort of balanced approach to this, but I'm I'm not the one, I'm not one that's going to be complaining about getting a whole lot of damage from the rifles because, honestly, it's better to have this more damage than I need than the other way around because I don't want to be shooting at gunners for five seconds waiting for them to die mid-reload animation, so I'm okay with this. Little babby gunner, you can sit down, buddy. And you can get mag dumped. Haven't witnessed the gauss rifle lady yet. The one from the creation club. Maybe I killed her without even knowing. A short barreled PDW with a laser sight obviously has pretty good hip fire on this thing. You'll notice that the spread on this barely increases at all. The bloom on the HUD would uh, pretty much say that it's not actually increasing as you're firing at all, which means. If we want to fire this thing with all of the movement speed of walking around normally. But the accuracy to hit headshots fairly consistently should be bothered to aim up high. Then we can get the job done really easy. So yeah, it's an exceedingly powerful weapon, but that's fine. And hang on a second. We're not quite done yet. We'll just kill that guy there. And not a single round of that. Okay. Okay. We've kicked the ass, and now it's time to chew some bubblegum. I think I've got some right here. Yeah, there we go. Yum. 45 health from bubblegum. That they, they nerfed that in Fallout 76. All right. Time to take this guy down during the day because, well, I don't need to sneak fully, but I'm going to do it anyway just to speed this up a little bit. And since we get the sniper knockdowns on a semi-automatic rifle that can fire this fast we can pretty much lock him down and he'll be just on the ground over there for the rest of his existence which won't be for very long whoops i think i just killed the hostage all the silhouettes look the same yes the human silhouettes look the exact same as a super mutant that's the story and i'm sticking to it and we'll hose him down just with the standard one here he's actually picked up a feral ghoul reaver he stomped on that allowing us to get a quick little sneak critical to finish that. And that nightkin there. Okay, you've got a stealth boy, but you're firing a minigun. So, do you want to be stealthy or not? The answer is no. Stupid, stupid, super, super mutant. Also, cool minigun. That's like a Fallout 3 New Vegas minigun there. I think they go pretty hard in Fallout 4 mods. Anyways, uh... I guess we'll just move on. We'll blast something else in close quarters. Okay, so Mr. Giant Ghoul over there. We're going to hose him down just with the standard automatic one with a suppressor here. Just to see if we can one mag him. We can with about a third bullets left to spare. Okay, I'm going to bring this up now. This weapon is overpowered and that's all I'll say about it. <laughs> It's just a little bit stronger than your average modded gun. So, far bit for me to say nerf something. I'm usually against all that, but, you know, you could take it down a little bit. But that's fine. There's something as a player that I could do is just use a lesser receiver instead. And then I'll can, I can balance it to where I want it to be. But I'm not going to do that. I like big damage numbers. Okay, I realize I haven't used... The fourth one I made all that much so far. So let's see if we can kill these gunners before the giant 
Super Mutant over there gets aggroed. He's currently walking away, which is a pretty good thing. So if we can get the drop on all of those Super Mutants before they even get themselves into combat, then that'd be a pretty good thing. We'll just creep in a little bit closer here. We've got a gunner there. Little babby gunners. What did you have? That was a... I don't know the sketch name. No, that's not a... Okay, that gunner just got squashed by the giant mutant. We've already killed one of those, but we'll swing around and finish it off just a little bit later. But first, we've got some raiders to take care of. The ones that'll usually run away. Yep, he's out of here. Doesn't want any part of this. That Sheila tried to stay behind. I think she would change her mind right before I got that final blow in, but... Well... Not my problem, mate. So, let's just use this thing a little bit in third person because I haven't used this thing that much at all and haven't really shown off the animations as such. So, hang on, I just got attacked by a bear. Please don't. That's what you get. You get exploded like that. And, ah, uh, yes, tactical reload animations. I've got a mod that allows me just to disable that keyword on weapons. So I always get the empty reload, but I get to press that cool uh, button that releases the bolt catch every time I reload, which is a victory in and of itself. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I wanted to crouch, actually. My brains will not be splattered today, Mr. Mutant. And honestly, whatever. Just take care of yourself. You're not even worth the bullets, mate. Now that we've got this little position here, we'll take out that light for a, for a start. And then we can get back to sniping. That's a one-shot kill to that guy over there. Probably won't one-shot that guy. He's a little bit too far out. Can we catch that centaur through the hitboxes? We can. And that one will go down as well. Each of them falling in slow motion because of a New Vegas cinematic kill mod that I've installed which doesn't cause crashes at all, so don't worry about it. Now, one Nightkin, he'll go down with the 4.4 times crits, and next up, we've got Mr. Enforcer. And a Nightkin who says they're unstoppable is, in fact, stoppable after all, and we've only got two left. I feel like this thing is just totally crushing and dominating. Like, that's a Super Mutant Warlord tier bullet sponge right there and it's just cut through him in 10 bullets which you get through pretty quickly so yeah it's it's kind of insane the power this thing has so whether warfighter wants to adjust that that's up to him but i will say that it could probably be turned down a notch but we'll finish this off by shooting at all of these mutants we'll just stay put see if we can do this without being detected never mind i'm gonna back off now not a big fan of that giant mutant encroaching on me, so I'm just going to rattle the trigger until I get enough hits to finally finish him. And now we're fine. I think this fight's over, mates. Just put your guns down and you can all live. Actually, I'm going to kill you anyway, so fight. That one's only got a pipe gun. You are severely outgunned here. You have got no idea how outgunned you are. Okay, so that was a little bit of a cruisy run, not a single bruise to show for it. So, uh, yeah, that there was Honey Badger slash Chimera from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It's a great fun weapon to use, it's put together really well, the customization is awesome. The sounds are from Call of Duty, so that's great. The animations have been ported in beautifully, and the weapon doesn't make the game crash, which is a big plus for me. So, if you'd like to see this in your game, check out the link in the description. If there's an Xbox port, I'll ask about it. I'll find out something. If there is, I'll be linking that in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys.